about the uh, phenomenology of hope that Father Perioz will talk about. Uh, he translated the text from the French. So we are very happy that we now have a Filipino translation of, the, of Marcel's uh, phenomenology and the physics of hope. I think he did it in 19, around 1989, probably. More or less. I remember uh, I brought that text from my. How did I mail it to you, Father? You mailed the French text. Oh, yeah, I mailed the French. I, that's, that must be before 89. Right. Yeah, so, it took uh, me a long time to translate it. Yeah. So we have it available. Is it translated, Father, in your philosophy yeah. of religion book? Yes. Okay, I uh, just would like to advertise this new book. Uh, it won the National Book Award in uh, philosophy. Uh, it's entitled Philosophy and Unreal. And in that uh, book is included this translation of Gabriel Marcel's Metaphysics book. So I've been using that uh, book. Uh, I remember I used that when I was a student in 1978. So uh, it's, it has a long history at the uh, university. I think it, that's probably one text where most Athenians share the language. If you talk to any Athenian, they have read Marcel's phenomenology and Athenians. But we're okay with talk about it. Uh, so we are very happy to have you guys. I shall try to speak about the ph ph philosophy of hope of Gabriel Marcel. Although I translated it from French into Filipino, I'm g giving this talk in English because we have some friends from other countries. And so it's better, I think, to give this talk in English. Now, the philosophy of Marcel is a phenomenology which is similar to Husserl's phenomenology, but at the same time different from it. It's phenomenology in that it moves in the consciousness. One reads books of phenomenology not with the top of the head, but with one's entire consciousness. And since many of us, including me, have a tendency sometimes to read books with the top of our heads, we sometimes feel lost when we read the work in phenomenology unless we remind ourselves one has to read this book with one's consciousness. The, the thinking does not just move in the mind, it moves in the heart, in the body, in one's entire consciousness. So, In that sense, Marcel's phenomenology is similar to Husserl's, but it's different in that he does not put existence in parentheses. He moves within the actual life, the actual being, the actual living reality that is experienced by the thinker. He does not want to be called an existential phenomenologist either as some people would call him. Once he was asked, are you an existentialist? And he answered that he did not want to be classified, that he does not believe in classifying people's thinking into categories, for example, so-and-so is an existentialist. But then he said, if one has to use classifications and one has to classify him, he'd rather be called a Christian Socratic. So the, the Socratic means he knows, and at the same time he knows he does not know. He moves in the thought which is aware and takes a stand that a human being can know the truth. He does not move in the attitude that one cannot know the truth, one can know only one's thought, one can only propose certain positions, but one cannot really know the truth. 
No, he believes that one can know the truth. But at the same time, when, she, when one knows the truth, he knows he does not know the whole truth. Truth is not a possession, not something that one can put in one's pocket, so to speak, nor is it something that one imposes on others. But truth is one's, one's being in reality, consciously moving in reality, and at the same time dynamically, dynamically aware that if one is moving in reality, one is, is aware that one does not know, but one wants to know, and in the process one knows, and the more one knows, the more he is aware that he has a lot to learn. I said that he does not, truth is not something to be imposed. It is something to be shared or something to be invite, to invite and be invited to. He, he says the philosopher is one who has experienced the search for truth and has found some truth by walking on a path of search and finding. And when a philosopher writes or speaks, he, sh he tries to tell his reader or tell his listeners, I have walked this path and I have seen these truths. I have experienced truth in this way. And so I'm just pointing at it. I'm inviting you to look. I'm inviting you also to share in the experience. It might turn out that you see the same thing, or it might turn out that what I have pointed out to you might enable you to see some things which I myself have not seen, but which on the occasion of my, my pointing you have seen. Because I have experienced things in this way, it might help you to experience things in another way, but never in a re relativistic attitude that, well, this is my experience, that is your experience, but rather reality is rich and humanity is rich. And if each one is looking for the truth to the best of one's ability, one can see the different aspects of truth from another person, but if both are looking sincerely for the truth, there will always be a kind of an understanding, a kind of a convergence, a kind of being able to see that in the same, the difference, there is a sameness. In the diverging, there is a converging. Now this is supposed to be on the philosophy of hope of, of uh, Marcel. Now in any philosophical meditation of Marcel, he's always aware of two orientations. These two orientations were first called being and having. In an early work of his, which, was co he, called, which he called being and having, he, he set forth his search to clarify to himself and hopefully to clarify to his readers that the human being's consciousness is always moving within two orientations, which he calls being and having. He is searching for clarification of these two orientations and in his later work, Perhaps his clearest setting forth of the orientation of having is found in his work in an essay which is part of the collection called Homo Viator. He has a book called Homo Viator, which is a collection of what we might call very long essays, very long meditations, 
and it includes one called in the English translation, the ego and its relation to others. Also within that, this same book or this same collection is a sketch for a, phenomen for a phenomenology, a sketch towards a phenomen phenomenology and metaphysics of hope which will be the main source for this lecture. But before we can go into this lecture, a short sketch of being and having. So having is set forth in that essay entitled, The Ego and Its Relation to Others. Now the ego and its relation to others is the English translation of a very interesting French title. The French title is Le Moage à l'autrui, literally, the me, I, and the other. Moage, I think the word is a coinage of Marcel. Moi, me, je, I. So this exaggerated emphasis on oneself this exaggerated centering of the whole world and the whole reality on myself, which he called having in his early works. In this later work, he calls it moage, me, I. I have a feeling that that's part also of Marcel's sense of humor, to coin a word like moage and, and the others. What happens when I'm moving in this orientation of the me, I? The English translation says, the I, myself. I could see that because in a printed work, the me, I would look rather bizarre, I think. But in a lecture among friends, I can say me, I, I suppose, without upsetting anybody here. Okay, I'll say me, I. In the orientation of the me, I, in my Tagalog translation, I use the word Abba Ako. In the orientation of the me, I, of the Abba Ako, I am the center of everything. My consciousness is such that anything I experience is filtered through the, the giving, my giving of importance to myself as the central reality in the world. And I tend to look on the other as an instrument to give me security. I speak to the other, for example, I tend to look on him as a sounding board. When I speak to him, I expect him to faithfully echo my words back to me and to give me security, to give me approval, to give me comfort. Because there is an emptiness within me. When I am in the orientation of the me, I, there is a roaring emptiness within me and I need security, and I like to get it from others. So the other is an echo cha echoing chamber to give me comfort and security. Another way also where I can look on the other is to look on the other as a rival. If instead of giving me comfort and security, instead of echoing me back to myself, he also or she wants to be the, the center of things, then he or she begins to look to me like a rival. I also tend to look on him or her, to look on the other as a instrument to aggrandize myself, an instrument to give me a good name, for example, an instrument that I can own and manipulate. 
to make my projects prosper. Now, this orientation of called having or the me-I orientation exists, Marcel suggests, in every person in different ways. And his philosophy is to share with us his realization of this orientation in himself so that we might share in, in, the, in that realization of, of that orientation in ourselves. This is not that Marcel takes the stance of somebody who is pointing out to people their shortcomings and their sins, but rather we are human beings and we have this orientation and it is good to be aware of it. This is how I became aware of it. Might it help you for you to become aware of it in this way? The other orientation is being, and it's sometimes expressed in a sentence, in a Latin sentence, esse est coesse. To be is to be with. It's sometimes expressed in the word community. So the orientation of being is the orientation where in my consciousness I'm aware that to really be, to really be a human being, to really be something or someone who exists in reality is to be aware that we are not alone, but we are always with each other, that we are always in community. <coughs> and so this means an openness to the truth, an ability to listen, an ability to share, not in a sentimental way, but in a quiet searching for reality, in a quiet being open to reality, in a quiet allowing the freedom of others to flower within myself. And then again, Marcel is, as it were, reminding us, you can see this orientation present in yourself. You can see this present at least as in, your be in our better moments. We have a desire to have this kind of orientation, to be able to listen to others, to be able to let others be themselves, to live in a community. Now these are the two orientations which called having me, I, or on the one hand, and on the other hand, being, community, being with. To be is to be with. We are not asked to, these two orientations are not presented as two orientations which you can choose. You can choose, you can say, I want being, or, but well, I, perhaps you want being because you're a good man, but I'm a different person. I prefer to choose having. It's not like that. It's not like that. comic fairy tale called The Thirteen Clocks, and where one of the characters was a wicked duke. And the wicked duke's famous line is, we all have our weaknesses. Mine is being wicked. So that is not the attitude that you can choose one or the other, but rather 
if I am moving in the, in the orientation of having, I am not being my true self. I am bring destruction not only to people I deal with, but to my own self. And if I'm moving in the orientation of being, then I am trying to be my true self. Marcel admits that most of the time we are moving in the orientation of having, that we are moving in the orientation of being during our best moments and a great deal of the time as something we're trying to do rather, rather than as something we are accomplishing. But he implies that trying to move in the orientation of being makes a real difference in our lives even if we are not perfectly moving in the orientation of being, but are trying our best with many failures, but with constant standing up after we have fallen and continuing to try, makes a big difference in our lives, not only in our own lives, but in the lives of the people we live with, and that it is worthwhile trying our best to live in the orientation of being, even if we don't do it perfectly. So then, for the present, let's call that our treatment of the orientation of, of the two orientations of Marcel, having, me, I, and being, community, to be is to be with. Now, what about the meditation on hope? The meditation on hope comes, makes its entrance this way. Most of the time we live our lives with some reasonable feeling or some, what we at least would think, a reasonable feeling of meaningfulness. For example, we are here in this AVR hall, and we believe that there's some, we're doing something reasonably meaningful. But suppose well, during some moment, all of a sudden you say, it comes upon you. What am, I, what am I doing here? What am I sitting down here for? What for am I trying to meditate on hope? And it might, you might wonder, is there any meaning to what I'm doing? And then again, there are certain life experiences where life begins, seems to lose meaning. Perhaps the meaning of one's life is in a certain person. Say a father loves his son very much and without the father being fully aware of it, the meaning of his life is, he finds his life meaning in his son. Now if the son becomes ill and dies, the father suddenly has a feeling life has no meaning anymore. Or if a man has a wife and his wife is the meaning, the center of his life, and his wife dies, then his life would seem to have no meaning to him, for him anymore. Or the example of Marcel, if one is a writer, and the meaning of his life in his, is in his writing books, but then he gets a writer's block. He can't seem to write anything anymore, and so, the meaning of his life is gone. This experience comes to the consciousness like an experience of darkness. In the light, we can see things. We can find our way. When it's dark, the world disappears, and we are groping, and we bump into things, and we can't really 
realize where we are going or if we are going anywhere at all. This experience of darkness, of meaninglessness, or at least a wondering if there's any meaning at all left. That is the mean, it is in that experience where one either despairs or hopes. Now, Marcel says, if you are moving in the orientation of having, we cannot really hope, but we might think we are hoping. If you are moving in the orientation of having, I might not find a way of giving myself meaning in the dark, but I might pretend or think even that I have found meaning in the dark. And this are, is found in three philosophies which Marcel points out move within the orientation of having and gives a person who uses these three philosophies and a, a feeling anyhow or an idea that he is moving meaningfully in the dark. The first one is optimism. Now he's not using, he himself says, he's not using optimism in the loose sense in which people use optimism. Sometimes when people say, Father Arupe is an optimist, what they really mean is Father Arupe has Christian hope, which he never loses in the midst of all kinds of terrible happenings in his life. So in ordinary usage, optimist often refers to a person who has hope. Now Father uh, Marcel did not use Father Arrube as an example, but I use him as an example because when he was alive, people would always say he is an optimist because no matter how terrible the condition of things in the world is, Father Arupe was always smiling and was always giving courage to other people and giving courage to himself. And, and he was a Christian, full of Christian hope, but people would call him an optimist. Now that, he I think is an example of what Marcel refers to when he says, in ordinary usage, very often we use the word optimist to refer to somebody who has real hope. But he says, it is a word which can refer to a certain philosophy. He says, like the philosophy of Leibniz. The philosophy of Leibniz is profound in many ways, but when it comes to his optimism, it is rather shallow. The optimism of Leibniz is, this is the best of all possible worlds. Things are better than they, they ever were, and they can be, and whatever is happening is the best, is always for the best. There is no real disaster or catastrophe. Everything is good. Now, that philosophy of Leibniz was caricatured 